Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Let me add my well wishes and love. And to all the Australian dads, congratulations, you get two Father's Day. And uh, wherever in the world you are at, we want to thank and honor all the dads. Um, you know, it's funny, we're talking about this series 3D God, and there's a Father's Day, but I've never heard of a Master's Day or a Creator's Day. Week one, I hope you enjoyed that summary, which hopefully caught you up if you've missed it. Uh, all our messages are available, so you can always go back onto YouTube and watch any of them. But as we talked about how our identity is in our sonship, but our identity is flavored with humility, knowing we are both son and servant, and knowing that we are created at the end of the day, we are in awe of who He is just because of who He is. And so I hope you've really caught up to speed. And today I want to sort of go a bit deeper into the implications of this for us. You know, we talked last week about how there's a danger with uh, son and servant and being the created in terms of uh, what that could become. You know, the whole point of this series is that we need a 3D experience, a 3D view of God, because to have just a one-dimensional view of God is actually immature. We talked about how sonship could actually veer off into entitlement. If you think of someone who's got entitlement or they almost are careless or lazy with their salvation or indifferent, just saying, well, I'm a son, everything's going to be fine. That's often a sign of sonship without the humility of servanthood. Sonship without servanthood to balance it results often in an entitlement. And somebody who is really feeling entitled or even careless about their walk with God needs a greater revelation that while they're secure as a son, He is Lord God. He is God our Master. And really when you find yourselves getting entitled, say, God, I need to know that you're my Lord. I want to expose my heart to that because that'll counterbalance that. When we talked about how servanthood can veer off into a mindset, Really, when you have a servant's mindset, it's because you understand servanthood, but you haven't balanced that, on the other hand, with the identity of sonship. Sonship, when you know you're, you're a servant or you have servanthood in your life, but you understand you're a son, then you don't get dragged into the mindset of a servant. When you find people who have a victim mindset or a fear mindset or an insecure mindset, and they're always, you know, uh, anxious or you know, brittle in terms of their identity. That's a sign you maybe get servanthood, but you haven't really grasped that you got to balance that with the fact that at the end of the day, no matter what your role, no matter how humble you feel in your service, you are a child of God. And then when you think about how in terms of being the created, you could veer off into indifference. See, indifference is literally being the created without any sonship being the created without any relationship. When you feel you're just a piece of clay that's been made by an impersonal God, when you realize you're made and designed by God, but in the context of identity, in the context of sonship, you won't be indifferent, you will be in awe. Do you know, often when you talk to a non-believer or a non-Christian, and maybe you're online today and you're not a Christian and you're just watching because your kids asked you to watch or you've just logged on, I wanna encourage you that it's not wrong that you are indifferent, but what's clearly missing is a personal relationship with a personal God. You cannot have a personal relationship with Father and still be indifferent to God. See, everybody in the room is His creation, but not everybody is necessarily His child. Why? Because even though we're all made in the image of God, it's only those who actually introduce relationship and sonship when indifference starts to fall away. Then you think, well, okay, I don't have a one-dimensional view. Even a two-dimensional view, it's not immature, but it is incomplete. And so if you think about it, let, let's apply this to our lives and look at what this looks like. I don't know if you've ever met people who are reverent, but they seem to be distant in their intimacy with God. They understood servanthood and sovereignty. They know God as master and as creator but maybe the intimacy of identity is missing. And so how do you know if that's the dimension you're missing? Often there's a religiousness, there's a, there's a fear, there's a sense of, you know, you can even tell people like that and sometimes how they pray. We're not judging how anyone prays, but it's like, you know, they, they have a different voice and they go into another room and they sort of become another person. And so hang on, you're talking to your dad. See, that's someone who's probably got two dimensions. They, 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 they're in awe of God. They understand His power and they're willing to serve Him and do whatever. 
but they're missing the, the, the sonship, the, the intimacy, the identity that comes from knowing I can run into my father's arms. I can come boldly into his throne. And you know, when you hear someone talk to God, you can hear the depth of intimacy or you can hear the sense of distance. If you're reverent but distant, I want to encourage you. Today is the day, Father's Day is the day to make him not just your master and your creator, but your father. Then there's also people, if you find yourself in this season where you love God, you really do. You're sincere, you, you, you're affectionate for God, but you're disappointed. At the end of the day, you're disappointed in God. If that's you, it's possible that you have identity in God as a son. You love Him, you know that. You have humility as a servant, but maybe we haven't surrendered to His sovereignty because really someone who loves God but is disappointed is often filled with why questions. Why God? I don't understand why this happened to me. How come? And you go deep into introspection and you wonder why this has happened. It's, it's maybe a sign, not of a personality type, but of a need to surrender to his sovereignty. You love him and you'll serve him, but he is God. He is the potter. I am the clay. And maybe in, a, in another sense, another example of 2D is people who are powerful. They know who they are in Christ and there's an awe in God but they're disengaged, they're isolated. You know, they might have identity down. They might even appreciate the sovereignty of God, but often lacking the humility of servanthood. These guys sort of tell everybody what to do and there's a arrogance and there's a strength. They might even be an authority. They might even do miracles. They might even see amazing things happen and lead you into amazing worship. But if it's not flavored with the humility of servanthood, th there's often an isolation. In fact, it could even be people who are not maybe loud, but they, they, they're secure in God and they're in awe of Him, but they're disengaged. I don't need to serve the body. I don't need to be with people. People like that also maybe have a two-dimensional view of God. And I want to encourage you, it doesn't matter where. This isn't a report card to make you feel bad. This is something that God needs to just run over all our hearts and all of us need to respond the right way. See, often we're reflected in how we approach God and how we pray, whether you know Him intimately or you're just in awe of Him or whether there's just a sense of, of reverence. Let me put it to you this way. As a son, I'm accepted. As a servant, I'm expectant. And as the created, I accept it. Meaning whatever lot comes my way, I'm in awe of who he is. And really the tendency or the imbalance for all of us to be one or 2D really comes down to our nature, to our nurture. And the real question we've got to ask before we finish today is how do we grow in these areas of lack? Well, that's nice, Pastor Mark. I've learned a lot about Father, Master, Creator, humility, identity, the dangers. How do I grow in this? Well, let me encourage you very quickly. Scripture, read the Word of God. If you went through the last two weeks, I've had Scripture after Scripture. Let the Scripture shape you. Search the Scripture if you're missing intimacy with God. Search the scripture of Father God and read and reread and meditate on that. If you feel like you've got familiar and there's no fear of God in your life, there are so many scriptures on the fear of God and, and the power of sowing and reaping and obedience and disobedience and the consequences thereof. Maybe you've just lost sight of the fact that he's sovereign. Read the book of Job. That'll wake anybody up. Read aspects of scripture that just show that we are like grass that fades and we're the flowers that are here one day, gone the next. But He is the Word, He is God, and He stands forever. Scripture can shape you. I want to encourage you. Number one, let scripture shape you. Number two, experience also can shape you. Do you know every experience you and I go through is supposed to shape you? Let me put it to you this way. When you go through forgiveness, have you ever been forgiven of something and you thought, man, I didn't deserve that? or you've had amazing favor in your life. Those events of favor and forgiveness actually should show you the unconditional Father heart of God. God was so good to you when you didn't deserve it. God gave you mercy when you weren't looking for it. And I can promise you that every experience of forgiveness and favor should draw you closer to the heart of God. Let the experience shape you, don't waste it. Don't go, man, he healed me, but oh, it doesn't matter. Let that draw you closer and let it shape you in the Father heart of God. Faithfulness and fruitfulness. These are things that should anchor us in the servanthood of God. This should anchor us when you realize, man, I've received what I sowed into. I've seen the faithfulness of God, the fruitfulness of God. Do you know when you sow, the Bible says you will reap. And when you sow and you reap and you've got a story to tell, 
Let that shape you and say, man, God is faithful. Wow, he's true to his word. I did this and this came out. God is truly a faithful master. And then at the same time, many people are going through hardship or mystery where as a son, you can't understand why this is happening to you or a daughter or as a faithful child, you're saying, God, I'm faithful in that area and I don't know why it's working out. And listen, even trials, even storms, even hardship and mystery should shape you and I. Do you realize that when we worship God, you worship Him, when you receive thanks, forgiveness and favor, it's easy to worship God. But when you worship God in times of where He's been good to you and you've been good, it's still generally easy. But when you worship Him in hardship and mystery, that's a sign that this experience is shaping you. Do you know I want to declare over you today, man, woman, young or old, blessing and barrenness is supposed to push you closer to God. You know, I started this whole series with an experience I had in the year 2000, and I talked about really the prevailing experience I had with God was master servant. The other two I knew were real, but master servant was really the majority of my interaction with God, which is why when I said, God, I'm gonna seek you in prayer and fasting, I expected a return. And really, I understood consequence, but when I fasted and prayed and nothing happened, because I expected a consequence, I was disappointed because of the master servant expectation. And then when I messed up and I thought, oh, well, I'll never experience the closeness of God again, that's when I experienced the fatherhood of God. And you know, really in an amazing way, the Lord was actually answering my cry. My prayer was, God, I wanna know you more. I want to know you more. And he said, yes, son, I'm gonna show you myself because you only know me as master servant, faithful Lord, but I'm your, I'm your sovereign creator and I, and I experienced that. And I'm also your intimate father and I experienced that. He didn't show up as I expected because he is sovereign. And he did show up when I didn't expect it because he is loving. And you know, maybe God hasn't shown up for you in the way you thought. Or maybe God has shown you favor and mercy that you just blows your mind. It's just introducing another dynamic of God. Let scripture shape you, let experience shape you. And finally, let worship shape you. Let worship shape you. Do you know, you might not realize this, but even in our worship, our worship, often the songs we sing actually carry the heart of someone who's declaring the love of a son, the awe of the created, or just the lordship of a servant. You might not even realize it. There's so many songs we sing. So for example, we talk about a loving father. Some of the songs, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by it's who I am. Then what about this song? Oh, the overwhelming, ever-ending, breathless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fires still love, our leaves in 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And then you know this one. He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves He loves us. Oh. Oh 
Father Heart of God expressed through song. And as you worship with those songs, you feel the intimacy, the tenderness of a loving Father. And then there are other songs that just describe the Master, the, the Lordship of God. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul. I Even a song we've sung recently, it just shows the faithfulness of God. I am standing on every promise that you made. We will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. Jesus, we will trust every word we hear you say. We will see it come to pass in And then there are songs that just make us want to fall in awe of who He is. Because no matter who we are, it's who He is. Our God is an awesome God. He of it all. Day and night. 
Right now, wherever you are, why don't you join us as we worship? Come on, can we worship Him? It's Father's Day. He's Master. He's Creator. But let the worship begin to shape you. As you begin to sing these songs, let it begin to deepen your depth with God. Come on, wherever you are, if, you, if it's possible, why don't you stand to your feet and let's just enjoy His presence as we worship together.
perfect in power and love and purity.